You know, I can just imagine the confusion of people joining this game because by the time that we actually loaded into the main base, Dario started the drone, cancelled the drone, so there was some blood on the south side of his hatchery. And imagine if the first thing you see is like, why is there blood in the main base of the Zerg? Like, what is actually happening over here? Well, is that, that is what skin? happened. <laughs> yeah, that's like, wow, StarCraft 2 is getting real violent, isn't it? Like, we're just covered in blood right now before it even starts. But TLO opening up with the 12 pool here. Meanwhile, Masa seems like he wants to play mm. some <gasps> fancy Reaper stuff, but he's going for the barracks at home. Yeah, I'm actually a huge fan of this. Uh, Masa has... Uh, I was actually saying that I thought he was going to do this versus Scarlet in one of his games. He ended up just going for the proxy racks instead for Marines. But this is something I've definitely seen him still do a lot. Even though this has not been as popular lately, he's been able to get a surprising amount of success with it. And we are going to end up seeing yet another one of those uh, barracks being added on up in the high ground of the main base. Now, that does mean this is not a, really a full wall off. So Masa, who... He doesn't yeah, really but, bother to scout when he goes for this. He's going to have an but, open door for these links. Well, maybe can buy some time with the depot, even if it's just a couple of seconds. This feels really bad for TLO, if you ask me. I mean, okay, if you yeah. get in here, a grenade can actually bounce the Zerglings away. The SCB survives, but one link is on the other side of the wall. Gets the kill on the SCB. Can you believe it, Rafi? I mean, that's pretty good stuff. The depot actually didn't get cancelled. Okay, that's nice, but I still think for a 12 pool, this is not that great for TLO, no? No, I think it's a really, really uncomfortable spot because TLO is going to guarantee the loss of these six lings right around the time that the Reaper pops on out. And now, Masa can fully wall off. He has all three of these Reapers about to pop out, and I don't even feel like his attack is going to be very delayed. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, losing the depot was probably the most expensive part of all of that. 150 minerals down the drain, but meanwhile Darius is working with a very mediocre economy. And let's not forget that circling speed is long ways off. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Darius is going to go for a roach one and maybe try to defend with roaches here. Like a spine can keep you safe for a little while, but reapers are so quick, so flexible, and then they have the ability to drop grenades as well. So we do indeed see that roach one go down, but I can't imagine that this is a very good start for a Zerg, but I don't see these worlds clash very often with each other, so I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'm definitely with you there. And you know what? Honestly, Roddy, I feel like Masa, he sometimes does lose games in kind of silly ways or is a bit inconsistent. One of the ways that usually he's pretty consistent is actually his micro. And I feel like that's what a lot of this kind of game is going to come down to. Having good Reaper control, I think uh. that's something you can usually counter from Masa. And he's going to be able to try and body block the uh, spine crawl from burrowing for a little bit. Snipes off some drones as well. Yeah, no, don't, that, actually that one grenade on the drone that was heading towards the ramp was super good. I love everything that Masa's doing so far. Masa getting close to killing the queen. Masa really wants the queen, gets the queen mid-air. Oh my goodness. Fatality in his glory days would have been proud of that one. Masa's playing awesome, and TLO's in trouble. Oh my god, Masa pulling back the uh, weakened Reaper over there. So ends up only losing two of those as he tries to move to the high ground. Maybe not the best uh, approach from that angle. But Masa is up six workers, and TLO is still forced to just make more roaches right now because the number of Reapers is not decreasing right now, Roddy. Yeah, I almost... Does TLO just want to make even more roaches and then get aggressive with them on the other side of the map as well? It seems a little bit awkward to think about that, but it almost feels what? like that's the plan. It is a very tiny map. There he has actually supply blocks, so he has to wait for this Overlord to finish up. What a wild way to start this game. I guess kind of what we expected on Submarine, but I still think that TLO's in all the trouble because Masa has basically the ball in his corner. And he can micro. And like you say, if there's one thing that Masa doesn't really mess up very often, it, it's with his micro. He loves being out there on the map with Reapers. He's in a fantastic economic spot. Gets the creep tumor there. Definitely kind of important as well after picking up a queen already in the early game. I love it. Yeah. And there's an active creep tumor as well. So it completely halts that creep spread for a little bit. Third CC is also finishing up back at home here for Masa as he also starts his transition out to get up more Marines. He's using these Reapers to just keep TLO at home. TLO has made this massive Roach Ravager army and he's finally able to bypass the Reapers a little bit, but he still has to respect them. He can't actually deal with the Reapers just coming in and picking off Ravagers one by one unless he's extremely cautious about this. But I love the focus fire so far from TLO. He's able to snipe off the weakened Reapers at least. 
I mean, Masa is doing a very good job. I gotta say, it's a little bit scary that Masa doesn't have a bunker. The tank is not out yet. There's no Cyclone either. Obviously, no Banshee yet. So mm -hmm. this is going to be annoying, and I expect two depots to go down. But I feel like Dario needs more than just two depots. And not a good grenade there allows Master to pick up one more Ravager. And obviously, if TLO ends up losing all his Ravages here, he's going to be forced to make even more units soon because he's going to need some units to deal with the follow-up aggression. And the tank is actually just going to shut this party down for now. Ooh. Oh no, TLO also backs off pretty late. He eats a second Siege Tank shot, loses all of the Roaches, only the Ravagers left alive. And, oh my god, Roddy, the, the Reapers are actually on their way back across the map. And there aren't actually too many units back at home because, of course, TLO is just trying to drone up. So his third base, it's going to take a surprising amount of damage from Reapers here. Yep, and one Roach is actually not going to scare these Reapers. Mas, I think, is just going to settle here. He's okay with losing a couple of Reapers, getting the cancel on that base, getting the kill on the drone as well. That does mean officially it's probably the end of the Reaper phase for now, but not before <laughs> one or two additional drones are going to fall. What a game for Masa, and what a disastrous game for TLO. This has been spectacular so far for Masa. And one last Reaper might even be able to get out of here alive unless the Ravagers can get that final shot off. <gasps> wow. Gets out a kind of token trophy with a Reaper with six kills to escape out of there and kind of live its life in retirement as now Masa proceeds into the next stage of the game with Stim and Combat Shields on the way. Stim nearly finished. And he's already moving out with a very odd timing. Yeah, but there's a lot of overlords here up for grabs, so why the hell not, right? <laughs> That's actually, those are going to be some really good kills because now TLO is going to be supply block one more time. I mean, I feel like we are watching something that's going to be inevitable, and that is Masa having a very powerful army Ooh. with way more DPS. I want to go back to the beginning. Oh, is Stim is done, and he's actually going to dive on the Ravages as well. I mean, yeah, the Marines are going to go down here, but losing these units with TLO is so painful because he just doesn't have much to uh, work with. Let's go back to the beginning. Do you think that TLO was just hoping for a Reaper fast expand on the low ground and then getting a cancel on the command center? Is that what he's hoping for with his opening? Uh, yeah, I have to imagine it was something along those lines where it was just going to be a pretty typical opening because that's usually why you do open up with a toll pool. The other thing I could see is that he was expecting some kind of just proxy racks and he would just have the lings already out and ready to just deal with early marines. I, I feel like it's got to be one of those two, right? Yeah, and this must have been one of the worst case scenarios. <laughs> you know, the Reapers are always going to come out, the barracks will always finish up, and there was just no potential for the Zerklings at all early on. I mean, look at the work it done. This is just not even fair. Army-wise, it's somewhat close. And let me just tell you, if you're new to StarCraft, if the army supplies are close, but the Zerg players building Roaches and Ravages against Terran, it means that Zerg is in all sorts of trouble because you need you can be up 40 supply here and still be losing the game. If it's even, well, you're in more than just a bit of trouble. Yeah, it is worth noting that the Sea Snakes are not really participating in this fight right now because Yellow has found a nice little angle. He's getting some corrosive biles off on some of the bio over here. Sniping off some <laughs> of these supply depots gets another corrosive bile there. Uh, Masa needs to reposition his tanks. Uh, I actually don't think he does. <laughs> I mean, that would be helpful, but his bio units are still so much more powerful. These Marauders and Marines are going to take care of business. And yes, it wasn't that pretty. He ate a couple of crossing balls, but it doesn't matter. Stim bio is just way too good for these kinds of roaches, or at least with these numbers that we're working with. Um, I think just kind of a build order loss for Dario. I don't think it would be too fair to be critical of the amount of damage he took. There's very little he can do. He can only hope that Masa messes up the Reaper control. And Masa did not mess up the Reaper control. He actually got a lot of value out of his early Reapers. And I love the way that Masa played it out. Yeah, I'm completely with you there. And I feel like the thing about Masa is that he is really good at identifying what type of build to pull out in the right situations. And that's, I think, part of the reason why when you have a player that really likes taking big risks or doing hyper aggressive things like that, Sometimes they end up looking really silly like Masa does, but he's so good at kind of reading his opponent and picking out the right build for the right map and doing the mind games and faking out build orders and all that stuff. I feel like I got to give him a little bit of credit on just having a good read on the right build to do for that map. Oh, absolutely. Very well chosen and mm -hmm. it paid off in a big way. And that means that Dr. <laughs> Dario is now in a little bit of trouble, but I'm not expecting those kind of builds to clash with each other again. So I think if... Uh, TLO is truly feeling it. He can still turn it around. We know that he's got a pretty mean macro ZVT game. 
we often praise him for his, uh, uh, you know, creativity. But Dario is a lot more than just creative. He's a fast player. He's got good mechanics, and he can really make magic happen. Even if you give him very little to work with, I've seen him uh, do some amazing things with just bainings over the years. So let's see what game two has in store for us. Do you think this is Mac, by the way, Ice and Chrome Master? Some Macarino action? I could see it. Um. I know I, I definitely predicted that Maso is going to go Mech versus Scarlet. I'm not sure if he will versus TLO. I could see him maybe playing a little bit just more ag aggressive and doing like a proxy or something. Mm -hmm. I could, I would, I wouldn't be too surprised if he does decide to go for Mech though, because his Mech is pretty gosh darn scary, and I think he does a great job, especially of doing like a hyper mobile Mech, not just like battle Mech with Cyclone Hellion, but with either Banshees or Battle Cruisers and all that good stuff mixed in. Would be fun. Let's see if we can get an awesome game two here between these two uh, well, top players of this region, for sure. They're both doing very well so far in the bottom left side with the main base of our Canadian Tower and he's up 1-0. It's Massa. And up in the top right hand side of the map, we have the red Zerg player from Team Liquid. He is TLO. And I'm happy to see much more normal openings so far. Masa with the barracks on top of his ramp. TLO going for that hatch first over here. So we're going to see an actual proper game. At least that's kind of what it looks like between these two. And then I really wonder, right? And like I predicted Masa to win, but I also said I honestly think it's very, very close between these two. It's just that Masa is such a mystery for me. He's a player that you've, we've obviously been watching and <laughs> casting for such a long time. And I still don't really know how to rate Masa. Because Masa on a good day is one of the very best in the foreign circuit. But Masa on a mediocre day is suddenly just way down in the middle of the pack, surrounded by 17 Europeans that people are not even <laughs> that familiar with, right? It's so crazy. Yeah, I think his skill is drastically different and not even just on, you know, a monthly basis or every couple of months his form really changes. I feel like it's on a daily to like weekly basis a lot of the time. He has drastically different form given any kind of current day and what his mentality, I feel like, is. Because that's the thing that changes, right? Yes, Masa, of course, over the course of months, will have his mechanics or skill level fall off or rise. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just his mental attitude and his approach to the game, how he feels, how confident he is. That's the stuff that changes. I feel like for Masa, it's always been very dynamic for him. Yep. And that's why I find it such an intriguing best of three between these two. And the first game, in my opinion, didn't tell us that much. Yes, Masa is great with Reapers, but it was also kind of easy for him because of the <laughs> build that he was facing. I think we can forget about it and let's just properly focus on this one. As, uh, obviously here it's important. I mean, this is a dance we've seen a million times already in this matchup. It is important though for Dario that he doesn't mess up and he doesn't end up losing a drone. A Ling or two is not that big of a deal. Just don't lose any drones over here. Oh, Masa already stopped up one of these drones. It's too far away. Oh my God, it nearly does not get that score crawler down. Got very, very close, but nice save from TLO. Keeps it alive and the Reaper is now gonna have to deal with Queens on either end if he tries to go up into that main base. So. Should be more or less the end for Masa being able to get a drone snipe off for a bit. I actually like how quickly TLO decided to drop that creep tumor, realizing that the Reaper took a little bit of damage and going in that deep, trying to uh, pick up those Zerglings. And then obviously the Reaper can turn around and try to pick up that creep tumor because it was too low on HP in the first place and even stopping the regeneration a couple of times already. So I think this is the start that TLO can live with. Yeah, absolutely. We have the starport and getting thrown down right now. Factory ready to swap onto that reactor. Uh, if the barracks ends up building a tech lab over here, I'm gonna keep an eye out for the next minute or so of Moss's build. Because uh, one thing that he did with a pretty good amount of success against Scarlet was going for the big battle cruiser mech play. And I have to say, it looked it looked pretty frustrating to go up against. Now, I think after I saw the game between Marine Lord and Saro, I am. Um, a believer of mech on this map because i felt Saro obviously played you know amazing as he often does and he had a couple of great fights he had a fantastic economy but marine lord's army seemed so beefy so strong and it just survived wave after wave of zerg and at one point i even started to relieve a little bit in marine lord's chances in that game so 
I wouldn't be upset if Master plays Mac. In general, I'm more of a bio boy myself. I find bio more exciting and more fun to watch. But I would love to see him play Mac, especially against someone like TLO. Because you know that TLO is going to have a very special approach on how to tackle Mac over here, right? So it'd be very fun to watch. I love also that our gauge of, you know, this this looks like a really strong build is now, well, you know, it didn't beat Cyril, but it looked good versus Cyril. Like, it must be a good build. Mate, yeah. like, if anybody does something that keeps him alive against Cyril for a long time, I'm a big believer of the build, okay? I don't <laughs> care how they open up. If you can oh, make Cyril do. sweat a little bit and burn through a massive bank a couple of times, I think you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a Bailing Nest being added on over here for TLO. Uh, as he continues, just add on drones, gets up some safety spore crawlers since he's kind of in the dark against uh, about what he's up against. And we're going to actually end up seeing Tech Lab not really being on that uh, starport. He's going straight over to the reactor. It has all of those factories cranked on up. Not the quickest drone pull there for TLO. Losing mm. four drones is perhaps a few more than you are comfortable with losing. At the same time, now the Queen's a bit out of position. Masa might get adventurous with his Reaper and Hellions here, but he spots the Zerklings coming in as well. At this point, Masa is at the point of no return, so he's going to have to try to get whatever he can and gets a few more. In all honesty, I think getting six drones while keeping the Liberator alive is pretty decent for Masa. Yeah, I think actually a little bit lucky there for TLO. He just didn't have that much saturation at that third just yet. It could have actually been even more damage, but now he saturates all that uh, mineral line on up and should be okay to mine there for a little bit. Now that those Hellions have been picked off for a while, but more Hellions on their way across the map. We'll see if that Liberator tries to make a return in later on with the uh, Hellions, but no, it's actually back at home killing off the Overlord. <laughs> well, that takes a little while, right? At least there was a Marine to assist there. Cause otherwise, it's kind of a sad thing. <laughs> Funny how Liberators work in the air, right? There are some fights where we're like, wow, the Liberators! When they're splashing over Midas or even over Phoenixes and stuff. But then if it's a single <laughs> Liberator using its anti-air, we're like, well, that's it. Then I'm just kind of waiting for the sad music to appear in the background. <laughs> Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, we might at least get to see a Liberator versus the Mutos because we have seven now going to be coming on out. And right now, it's mostly just about the Cyclones and a few Widow Mines to defense. Uh, Masa really needs to make sure he's in position and controlling those Cyclones very, very well. I also love to see where those Widow Mines are. And if, okay, yeah, they're already in a secret position. At least two or three. Oh my God, it might actually be all four of them are behind yep. the refinery at his natural. <laughs> that could be fireworks. For now, yeah. the Mutas are heading towards the south side of the map. But I kind of like that as well, because like having two mines is kind of cool, but then it's often like, okay, you soften up a lot of Mutas. If four mines at once are able to connect, I mean, then you're getting proper explosions and a lot of Mutas should be able to go down there. I really like the setup for Masa, man. I'm kind of feeling it. And I'm a bit worried for TLO. I know that Ling Bane Muda can take care of Battle Mac, but I feel like you need to be in a super dominant position. You need to swallow up the map with creep. And we know that Dario is capable of that, but he hasn't really been able to get there yet. Mm. Well, the first two Thors are getting started up right now, and those are a critical part for Masa to be able to handle some of those uh, Mutas. But more Hellions come running on in. I feel like Masa just has the worst luck with these Hellions. Every single time he runs into a base, there are not, like, the drones are seconds away from their transfer over. I mean, yes, but I still feel the Hellion run bys are successful. I mean, seven yeah, no, more I think drones. Still worth it. Yeah, obviously, that was a Liberator as well, harassing at three o'clock. But all of this was still okay. Dario has to be very careful. This is the first time that these Mutas are really making their way to the other side of the map. And they haven't got gotten much done yet at all he is actually ooh, the mines moved oh that's so sad the mines moved mm. while the mutas are actually heading towards the place where the mines were at first oh my goodness imagine how that would have played out if the mines were still there oh they didn't even have an overseer with them but now they're going to be able to potentially pick off one of the armories over here shut down the upgrades thors are over here alongside the cyclones so they scare off tlo is masa repairing up the armor he is sending a couple of workers over there to repair that up very, very important to get some of those upgrades up for that. Yeah, I mean, losing the armory now obviously stinks, but that upgrade mm -hmm. only just started, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. That was five mineralists, 500 minerals, 500 gas down the drain. And now TLO is actually kind of heading into a more proper anti-mac composition, as even though we had 
you know, the veinlingness early on and, uh, well, the ability to make veinlings, but Theolos decided to immediately go into roaches and infestors, something that obviously is perhaps a little bit better against Mac. I'm a bit worried, though, because the initial investment of the Mira so far just not paying off at all. Yeah, and we do have Neuroparasite being researched as well. That is one of the big things that with the style that Masa went for against Scarlet, Masa really struggled with. Just the Neuroparasites were brutal, but I mean, Masa isn't really going for that same sort of heavy Hellion cyclone uh, style that he uh, yesterday. He was actually instead going for something that was like very Thor, Siege Tank, that kind of uh, arm composition. Very heavy on those units and even the battle cruisers. So, I, I don't know. How do you, how do you feel about just? Is it just going to be the typical infester fungals, or do you actually expect yep. to see neurals? Well, maybe neurals on the Thors, but I think fungal is super important for the Hellions and the Cyclones, right? I think that's kind yeah. of straightforward. Munos are trying to be as annoying as possible. They get a refinery, still not really the damage I think you're looking for. For some reason, the Liberators have been really effective in this game. I don't know how Masa keep managing to sneak these Liberators to the other side of the map, but all of them are grabbing four or five drones. And I feel like it took 10 minutes for TLO to really get where he wanted to be economically. And I'm afraid that that may have just taken a little bit too long because Masa is close to maxing out. And even the upgrades, I mean, it's not like the Roaches and Infestors are going to have superior upgrades compared to the mech units. I'm really worried for Dario. Then again, if he gets a proper fight with a couple of amazing fungals, then lends a few neurals, it's definitely possible. All right. It looks like TLO is going to be the first one to move on out and try and make something happen over here. The Infestors oh. are burrowed. Masa not getting a sense of this just yet, not scanning or anything. He's starting to try and roast and toast a few of these wings, but... Here we go. Thor's actually doing a lot of damage to those mutas. Oh my god, but here come the Neurals. Yeah, that is amazing, actually. Well done. Scan goes down. Cyclones are going to lock on the Infestors, though. Only, well, one Thor is still alive. This is a, such a bizarre fight on both angles. Another scan goes down. TLO's losing a lot of his Infestors, oh. but he's picking up the majority of these expensive mech units of Masa. And Masa only has a few reinforcements that are coming on out. Are the Cyclones going to be enough? There aren't that many Mutas left over. So the Hellions can try and buy time versus the ground army. The Liberator even sieges on up and there's only three Mutas left over. Infestors not going to have a chance to run. They get burned to a crisp and it looks like Masa will hold on. But you're right, Roddy. He does lose his entire army in the process. It kind of is a big reset button. That was such a risky play by TLO, right? Having those seven burrowed infestors going up the <laughs> ramp. Imagine if Masa does throw a scan, even if it's not even to spot for burrowed units, but let's say he just wants to see what else is out there, right? Is this a trap? How big is that army? If he sees all of these infestors immediately, I think TLO's in all sorts of trouble. That wasn't the case. Now Dario is actually able to get his uh, greatest fire going. And this definitely suddenly feels like a much more playable game. Well. Looks like Masa's finding that kind of typical battle mech damage where he's catching a lot of units on the retreat, cleaning up some of the creep spread, being active out on the map. But TLO's trying to return the favor. He's got a bunch of these links and roaches heading on over to the building command center. And, oh, Masa pulls back to the right moment and actually does manage to find all of these roaches. He's going to be able to get a lot of free pickoffs here. Yeah, I think as long as Dario keeps Masa on his side of the map, that's a victory, right? The Hellions are going to try to be annoying and get a few more drones, but with that great Aspire on the way, it is important for Masa that he starts... I don't think Masa has any idea, right? He needs to keep track of Spire timings. He needs to know if Hive is out there. Um, he hasn't seen the Naturans forever, so he has absolutely no idea. He may be expecting it, but I think it's really important for the Mac player to have a proper read on where the Zerg is at and where the Zerg wants to go. All right, well... ELO is now just finishing up tunneling claws, so it's going to make it a little bit harder to track some of those counterattacks that Moss has been able to catch so far. Uh, but the Broodlord's now starting to morph on in. This gets a little bit more complicated. Oh, God, the lock onto the hatchery. You know, that, that disappears in a matter of seconds. And ELO is not going to be anywhere nearby to save that. You know what I love is that every single time Masa is making some great movement, he has another attack as well. And one more Liberator sneaked into the main mm -hmm. base where it got a few more drone kills. Now we do have TLO also being a nuisance on the bottom side. And this is a proper road fire. I am surprised to see that this is not a planetary fortress, by the way. Masa just dropping orbitals at his fifth, fifth base. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no fear. All right. Well, I guess for now, he's going to be okay with that. He's going to be able to save this. He's been so active on the north side of the map. 
It seems like TLO can only really send small squadrons to actually deal with the, uh, or do some counter damage. Uh oh. Everybody's also going to be able to find some more drones over here, potentially. Yep. And a couple of corruptors getting locked on. Now, the Cyclones have to be careful because you don't really know where those investors are, but for now, it seems like they will be able to get away. But PLO is already setting up a flank. Investors are coming in from the left side. I think that he will be able to land a good fungo or two here, and then Masa could be in a bit of trouble with his Cyclone. Well done by TLO. Great army movement. But he's now getting flanked as well by more Hellions and Cyclones. What is happening, Ravi? Oh, now the Broodlers are going to be getting involved, and it looks like the Cyclones are able to get a few lock-ons. Two or three of the Broodlers already end up falling. Is Masa going to have to retreat on out over here? As more Roaches come in from the right-hand side, Masa is on the retreat, but he ends up losing a majority of his army here. Sniped off a few group lords, killed the majority of the investors, but loses a lot of his army. I'm not sure if that was a great trade or an okay trade, Roddy. I think it was okay-ish, especially because he was once again dealing economic damage with Liberators. I don't know how these lips <laughs> are able to uh, squeeze through the cracks over and over again, but they just keep finding good positions and they keep finding seven or eight drones. Add that on top of the fact that TLO lost that base at 12 o'clock as well. This is really starting to add up and we can see that TLO is having issues maxing out and that's not where any Zerg ever really wants to be when they're going up against Mech. Oh, more investors on the way here for TLO to replenish all the investors he lost before. Another Liberator finding some more damage. You're right. He's just constantly finding these little cracks. I feel like part of it might even just be the fact that we have not that much creep spread. He, he, TLO has been losing so much of his creep spread because Moss has been oh. so active. Hellion Cyclone. Oh, that's in range. Yeah, it went like an inch too far, otherwise that would have been super annoying. At the same time, Maas are still active with Cyclones on the top side. Wants to get another cancel on this hatch. Can maybe get one more cancel? No, this time he locked down the drones and the roaches. <laughs> that would have been kind of funny. Is TLO's hatchery in the range of the sun? It is, right? It's <laughs> that's kind of ambitious. <laughs> yeah, I guess Maas will have an idea that there is something there, at least. Uh, we're going to end up seeing more mutas. A transition back into mutas? I don't know. Mm, I, Very I'm questionable. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Yeah, there's Vikings out already. There's a lot of Cyclones. I think what I'm mostly worried about with TLO is just the economy. 69 drones is not enough. Masa's at 82 SCVs. And don't forget, it's got like seven orbitals, right? Like, I don't know the actual number. Let's take a look. Yeah, it is seven. Wow, that was a guess. He's got seven orbitals. So the economy is way better as these armies are clashing as well. And the investors are exposed once again. That is an expensive lob. Even if these fungos are good, I don't know if they're good enough. And the Mutas are so clumped up. Oh, the Mutas taking a lot of damage over there from the single Thor that's putting in the work. Corruptors are also able to take out a majority of those Vikings. Now it's just the Liberators that are left over that are getting taken out. But it seems like Masa's is getting pushed back. But he's killed a lot of the army here for TLO. There aren't really too many Brutals left over. I feel like by the time Masa gets pushed back to his side of the map, he will have enough army to push this back. And I think TLO recognizes also decides to pull back himself. You know what's beautiful? The units lost resource tap. At this point, 29,000 resources have gone down on either side. <laughs> but Masa is so much richer. If you take a look at the income graph, you can see that Masa has been severely outmining TLO over the last seven, eight minutes. And that's kind of how Masa is just winning this game. Like the fights are even, they're both taking some heavy losses, but that's okay because Masa is super rich and TLO is seriously starting to run out of steam. I feel like just that top center base that Masa has sniped off, I feel like four or five times now, is really, really deceptive because you keep seeing like, oh yeah, TLO also has that base. He's actually got plenty of bases right now, but he's just constantly losing these hatcheries. He's going to lose this hatchery, the very, very aggressive one on the bottom side at the exact same time. Uh, it feels like TLO is having a really, really hard time establishing that next base. Yep. Shout out to that barracks, by the way. <laughs> just in this center. It's like, we don't need you anymore. Go take a look at what TLO is actually working at. And I think that all Masa really needs to do is make a proper push with his entire army and pre-siege Liberators, right? Because we haven't seen that a single time. Most of the fights, they just kind of happen because the armies run into each other. It's like, whoa, you're here? It's like, all right, let's duke it out, right? And I think if Masa <laughs> actually takes a slower uh, but steady approach to the next big battle. He should be able to book a convincing victory and with that just win the game. They are two resources different right now. That's insane. It's a 19 minute game and there are, there are literally two minerals <laughs> between them. 
Oh, wow. not anymore. Oh my goodness. What? Okay, well, you know, Roddy, losing all those mutas hurts. I think that might have changed the resources lost to have a little more. <laughs> Yeah, oh that was like two and a half thousand now, three thousand resources down the drain, not getting anything done. I really don't think it would have made much of a difference, but that's obviously not the way to make a comeback. Oh, uh, 54 meters of dive this game, right? That's 5,400 minerals and gas. Oh, God. You know what I find right. impressive as well? The 74 drones that have gone down. And this is not one of these games where Master mm -hmm. killed 50 drones at once, right? No, it was six, mm -hmm. seven, six, seven, four, five. He did an amazing job in harassing. Now he's finding a couple of Broodlords that are left for dead as well. And I'm looking at his army and I just don't see a proper way for PLO to engage it anymore. He's going to try to land Fungals. That is a good Fungal, but I think the rest of this mech army is just a little too powerful. Yeah, even with the Corrosive Vials actually hitting on everything, the Fungal's hitting every single one of these units. PLO might even be able to get a nice cleanup over here. He's just doing it. He's getting the engagement of his life. The problem is he doesn't really have a whole lot that's coming out behind this afterwards. Boss is still sitting up a bit of supply, but that that is the engagement to start mounting a comeback. Yeah, no, those Fungal's indeed were massive, but once again ends up losing this base. and. At this point, I mean, Masa truly is playing the War of Attrition and is going <laughs> in his favor. Gets another lock on there as well. Once that Infestor gets that Infestor somehow, don't ask me how, as we were following another Liberator that managed to sneak through the cracks and is going to get a few more drones. I know it's maybe not the most exciting thing ever, but I love the way that Masa is doing this. Slowly but steady, chipping away at that economy, picking up hatcheries, picking up a couple drones at a time. Just very well done. <laughs> And he's going to find a few more, this time actually finding quite a few as these Blue Flame Hellions encountering a lot of these drones that are trying to long distance mine. Even going to be able to pick off a queen or two over here potentially as he starts running away. Nice transfuse this from TLO. But man, TLO also has that top center base cancelled again and he only has this other base that he's been trying to get up. I think at this point, for the 8th attempt is still just trying to get proper mining. We have three planetary, seven orbitals, and two more command centers on the way. And then TLO just can't secure a hatchery. This is probably going to be the final fight. This is a couple of corruptors left. GG 